because uh, he saw the relation that, that there is between mathematics and, and the universe around us, but he wasn't able to come to this theory, theory of everything. So as people continue to study these formulas, uh, very recently they came out with something uh, that it's not called unified theory anymore, but they call it the string theory. And I want to explain it to you, not just for the sake of knowledge of this theory, but uh, this way you'll see how God and the Word of God is so amazing. Let's say you have um, an object like this one, and you break it in half. You get two halves, right? And then you get one of the halves and you break it. And you break it, and you break it. This with any object. And it gets to a point where you cannot break it anymore. Because it's so small, it's so tiny, it's unbreakable. But if you are able to continue to break it down, you will get to the, the, the small particles that are called atoms. And an atom, uh, so scientists say, because you cannot see them with a microscope, it's like our solar system. Pretty much like this. There's a there's a, a particles that gravitate around one another, and, and those atoms are really tiny, really small, and, and then we can define different kinds of uh, of, uh, of elements from those atoms. But uh, if you break the atoms, they, they even have smaller uh, particles. They they call the the neutrons and the protons. And if you go even uh, deeper, recently they found that there's something that is called a quark. And they say the quark is the smallest thing there is. Now, what these mathematicians continue to study is that, in fact, you can even divide the quark. And this is the smallest thing they get to. And they, and they say a quark can be broken into a little filament. It's like a string. But this is why they call it the string theory. And these strings vibrate. In fact, they said, if you get to that point through mathematics, instead of having just three dimensions, you have 11. So there's dimensions we don't understand. Things that are in the realm of the invisible. And they said these filaments vibrate. And if, if it was music, if they vibrate it as a, let's say, the key of A, they will produce certain kind of atoms. And if they vibrate in a different sound, they will produce other kind of elements or, or atoms. So they reduce everything in the smallest thing they can get to. They say it's these strings. And not only they vibrate and they produce a sound, but one of the first things that that vibration produces is something that is called a photon, which gives light. Now, I'm not saying this that this is like, like this, but it's kind of a coincidence that scientists say that sound originates light or that the vibration of sound originates light. I'm not saying it is, again, I'm not doing a new scientific theory. I just want to explain the Bible and tell you how wonderful this book is. Because from the beginning we can see that God used sound to create something that came out of nowhere. So when we study science, we can be smart enough to find God in all these little details. As I was studying, you know, this theory, uh, uh, they, they even say that the creation of the world happened through an explosion. They say it was a big bang. And now they say that big bang was originated by two little tiny filaments that vibrated in different frequencies. And they made the world appear from another dimension, which is par parallel to ours. Well, they can, they can come out with all these scientific proofs of what happened, but we know that God created the world that we see from the invisible world. Amen. If it was the string theory or the theory of everything, I really don't care, but I like to see that science more and more gets to a point in which they say this was not an accident. It is impossible to be an accident. Sound was created, yes, and, and this sound originated first light. And this is amazing. Now, the voice of God was heard. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to say that the voice of God is a filament vibrating. No. But God is the one who made whatever vibration, whatever happened, 
God, a superior divine intelligence far above you and me, created the universe and he created with his voice. Now in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 10, this is the last book of the Bible, John, which was one of the apostles of Jesus, was praying and, and he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which is Sunday, and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. Well, I've never heard a voice like the sound of a trumpet. I mean, there's people with, that, that seem like, a, you know, a broken uh, instrument. <laughs> but when it says a voice of a trumpet, it talks about some kind of different voice. <clears throat> In fact, what John is saying is, this, this wasn't a human voice. But I heard this voice. And this was the voice of God. God was speaking with an audible voice. To John. And this happened through scripture and it doesn't have to happen all the time. Also in the book of Psalms, he says that God ascended with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. And again, we see here the mention of the trumpet, or in the Old uh, Testament culture, the shofar, which was, which was a trumpet made of a, of a, of a horn, and, and it, it was a sound different from any human voice. But again, we see that there are sounds, and that those sounds come from heaven. Now, when John was continuing to have this revelation about the things to come, in Revelation 14, 2, he said, And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of a loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpies playing on their hearts. Come on, John, decide. <laughs> because I've been to Niagara Falls, and I've heard the sound of many waters. And it doesn't sound like hearts. And it doesn't, well, somehow like the thunder, yes. But, but, come on, John, what, what happened here? John was trying to describe what kind of voice he heard. Probably, if it was you and me, you would say, this was the voice like the Apple computer advertisement. <laughs> or this voice was just like that sound in that album from Led Zeppelin. Or this voice was just like, you know, hip hop songs. You see, in our culture, we will try to describe it some, somehow. But we see from the description and from descriptions of other prophets, it's really hard to describe the voice of God. Now, uh, two things we can see from these descriptions. It is loud and somehow vibrates. There's a vibration. Again, I'm not saying that the string theory is the core of the Bible. But it's kind of a coincidence that scientists find that the, the smallest you get, the more power you have, and it has to do with sound. And here we see in Scripture that the vibration of the voice of God was heard actually by people like you and me. And in many different ways. God speaks in many different ways. Now, uh, can you hear the voice of God? Habakkuk, a prophet from the Old Testament, knew the sound of God speaking to him. And, uh, and also Elijah described the voice of God like a still, small voice. So we cannot say it's always loud and it's like a thunder, but most of the times, yes, it's loud. In heaven, everything's going to be wireless. There's prison worship there. It's so loud, so loud. If you don't like loud music, you cannot go to heaven. I'm sorry. <laughs> because it's so loud. Yay! <laughs> it's loud. I mean, the still small voice came to the prophet in a very peculiar time of his life. But heaven is loud. And God's voice uh, can come to us in many ways. Well, God can speak to us through spontaneous thoughts. Uh, through things that we observe, many other things, feelings, impressions. So we can hear God's word in, in many, many ways, through circumstances. Sometimes things that are very personal, that are hard to explain, or if we try to explain, people think we're crazy. I, I heard this, this man telling his testimony uh, how God saved him. Uh, he was in a park and someone gave him a Bible and the wind opened the Bible and the a fly came and, and just uh, uh, landed on the Bible verse and he read and God started to speak to him and then the fly went to another Bible verse and then <laughs> and he was telling me this and I thought this was this is 
really interesting. And I, I was a new Christian, and I thought, this guy is nuts. He's crazy. <laughs> but, but this is the way God used to speak to him. Now, years later, I, I was uh, uh, pastoring the first churches that we planted, and I was uh, praying in the, in, the, in the forest. I like to go to the, to the woods and pray there. And, and I was praying because I was confused. I was a little tired many years in that church. And I thought, maybe it's time to go. So I sat down by a tree and I was praying. And I looked to the side, there's this huge spider web. And like Nash was uh, telling this morning, it was early in the morning. And it was something unbelievable because there was dew on the spider web. And it was shiny. <laughs> All those little drops uh, of moist around. And, and in the middle, a big, huge spider. And I look at the spider. And, and I thought, shall I continue here? But guess what? The spider was even more afraid. As soon as the spider sees me, runs from the center to the side. And the spider web is completely broken. Immediately, the Spirit of God told me, if you leave this church, this is what will happen. Because you're in charge and you're here. And if you leave, everything's going to break. So I, I, real, I, I was able to understand God wants me to stay here some extra time. And, and you see, God can speak to us through things like this. It wasn't the audible voice of God. I had the opportunity uh, uh, twice in my life to hear an audible voice. And, uh, and this is something amazing. But it's not something that can happen to everyone or all the time. But God many times will speak with an audible voice. Now, the question is, are you listening? Now, Paul will gently look someone close to you and say, are you listening? You know, this is something that mom, moms will do. Moms, sometimes, they will look at, at the child and they will, not, they will ask, are you listening? Sometimes they even yell. You're not paying attention. Well, my wife does this to me once in a while because I multitask. And it's really annoying when you want to say something to someone and they write it down and, and doing something at the same time or drinking coffee. So, so sometimes certain conversations that are very serious, we need just to stop and listen. Are you following me? Let's say you're at the doctor and you're telling about What's going on? And you say, it seems that I'm going to die, doctor. And this is terrible. And the doctor is taking notes on the phone. <laughs> the nurse comes. And he's not paying attention to you. Gets the point that you're frustrated. Because that person is listening to the sound, but they're not paying attention to what you're saying. Now, uh, this is a common thing that happens to Christians. And in order to listen from God, there's two things you need to do. You and me. First, we need to make ourselves available to God. So we need to have the right attitude. It's like coming to church. If you come to church to listen to the preacher, you'll miss it. But if you come to church to listen from God, now you came with the right attitude. I've mentioned this last week and some people have a hard time to understand what I'm saying sometimes. It's like this. If you come here to analyze and judge what happens, you, you can write down an article and you can become a critic. That's fine. But if you come here and in your heart you say, God, speak to me. That's a whole different story. That's a whole different story. Then you will be able to recognize or discern the voice of God. So this is the second thing. We need to recognize the voice of God. Because sometimes God is speaking and we're not listening. We're so distracted. Now in John chapter 10, Jesus was telling the disciples that He's the Good Shepherd. And He was telling them when He has brought His own sheep outside, He walks, he walks on before them and the sheep follow Him because they know His voice. They will never on any account follow a stranger, but will run away from Him because they do not know the voice of strangers or recognize their call. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Can you recognize the voice of God? Because if you can't, are you truly one of his sheep? Think about it. If you're still confused, if you don't know 
some people even doubt of the existence of God. I don't doubt because I recognize His voice. Now, there's things that can happen with a voice. Now, usually when my, when my wife calls me, I recognize her voice. And if I call her, she knows it's me. But last week I called her and spoke in French. And I was speaking in French for, for about a minute. And she thought it was a customer. She was at work. And she was kind of lost. But then after a while, she said, wait a minute. This is not a customer. This is you. And so she recognized my voice. You see, in order to recognize a voice, you need to be familiar with the person, right? It's kind of awkward if, if you call someone, they answer, and, and you say, oh, hello, Mary. And the other side says, it's not Mary, it's Joe. It's, it's kind of awkward. Because if, if you do this mistake, people can even get offended. You didn't recognize my voice. Hello. Jesus is saying, my sheep, they know my voice. And they follow me where? Outside. This is really interesting. Because Jesus goes ahead of us and he expects us to follow him. But Christians expect Jesus to come to rescue them. When they should be following him. Because if you follow him, you'll be close to him. If you expect God to follow you, that's a huge, a big mistake. Now, as we continue, and we're, I'm almost finishing this message, let me just tell you that in order to hear from God, we must, let, let, uh, well, uh, we, we need to be, to calm down, because sometimes we're so worried with circumstances of our life that we, we cannot listen to God. It's like a storm in our life. I really enjoy reading C.S. Lewis, and uh, I, I enjoy the Chronicles of Narnia, but it's not his best. He has better writings. And what, uh, uh, once he said in one of his books, the time where there is nothing in our soul except a cry for help may be just the time when God can't give you. You are like a drowning man who can't be helped because he clutches and grabs. Perhaps your, your own reiterated cries deafen you to the voice you hope to hear. On the other hand, knock and it shall be open. But does knocking mean hammering and kicking the door like a maniac? <laughs> so what, what C.S. Lewis is saying here is what the Bible says. In order to hear the, the voice of God, you need to calm down. You need to be quiet. How can you hear the voice of God if you keep talking? You know, some people <coughs> pray for an hour. And then they say, well, I cannot hear God telling me anything. Why didn't you, after you prayed for half an hour, why didn't you remain half an hour in silence? And wait for God to speak? To me, it's very disturbing if I'm with someone that keeps talking. It doesn't give me an opportunity to speak unless I'm in church. Okay? So, uh, it's very important that we stop and, and, and sometimes it's a crisis in our life i know this you know and, and you ladies are different from men because you, you have an ability a god-given ability to cry but if you lock yourself in the washroom crying letting all your makeup come down and then you look yourself in the mirror you cry once again <laughs> and then you keep crying and crying and crying saying god oh, why don't you speak to me you know we men, we, we, we do it differently. We hide ourselves really outside. And I know this by experience. It's not in the mid, middle of crying and, you know, just like the drowning man that God will speak to me. But it's right after. After you cried everything. And you're there in silence. And then God speaks to you. Amen. And you can come with a still small voice. You can come as a thunder. So we need to identify God. In Psalm 95, 7, he says, For he's our God, and we're the people of his pasture. Of his what? Of his pasture. So he's the good shepherd. And the sheep follow his, uh, 
uh, his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not, do not harden your hearts. So this is God's message for you. Do not harden your heart. You know, God sometimes will say things that you don't want to listen. Because we think we're so perfect. Now, uh, let me talk a little bit about the year. This is going too fast. Okay? In Revelation 2.7 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. This expression is repeated seven, seven times in that chapter. Now, it, and it makes me think, how many of you have an ear? <laughs> two people. How many of you have two ears? <laughs> okay. That's the ear. It's an amazing, it's an amazing organ. Now, uh, in, in the ear, we have the ear canal, uh, which is this area here. And the ear canal, it's, it's amazing. You know, it grows every day, two to three millimeters of new skin every single day. And there's like a, 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 a wax there that will not allow water to get in, to get in. So it's, it's very important. That's why when you use a Q-tip, you need to be very careful because you can block the eardrum, which is, which is up around here. The eardrum will receive uh, vibrations from the world around us, so that what we call sound, so we will receive these vibrations and it will transform, decode these vibrations in our brain, which is unbelievable. You know, on top of the ear, uh, uh, we have uh, like a canal that goes to our throat. And this is where we have our balance. So our balance is done with our ears. If, if we have a ear problem, we, we are out of balance. Or if we scream too fast, we're dizzy. And the way to, to try to compensate this, you, 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 you swallow. You know, you know, it's like you go on an airplane and you have different pressure and suddenly it's like you cannot hear. How many of you have this experience? And, but if you if you swallow it or if you if you if you breathe and you do pressure, then it kind of pops and now you can hear again. This is our ear, and, and it's so there's this part here that looks like a snail. It's it's an unbelievable work of, of architecture. Uh, in fact, uh, this part has can can detect sounds from 20 to 20,000 cycles per second in each ear. And, and in that part, there are 23,500 sensors. Wow! It's even better than the latest model of computer or of iPhone. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, look at this, you can detect the position. What about your ear? You don't have four sensors. You have 23,500 sensors. And in fact, after those sensors, you have 30,000 filaments on each ear that will transform the sound into a different code and your brain will receive all sorts of information through your ears. This is why someone can tell you, I love you. The words are right, but your ear is detecting something. There's a tone that tells you this is not true. This is not coming in the right cycle. Now if it comes more like, I love you, <laughs> or something like this, then your ear listens to the same voice, the same sentence, but it can detect it differently. Listen, he who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit says to whom? The churches. So if the Spirit wants to tell something at the church, shall I stay home? No. We come to church a very special place where we allow God to speak to us. It's not that He will not speak at home. It's not that He will not speak as you're driving your car. But the Spirit specifically speaks at the church through the preaching, through so many things that happen. And as we come to church, we open ourselves. And not just this physical ear, but the spiritual ear to be able to listen from God. Now Jesus said, for the, the heart of these people has grown dull, for their ears are hard of hearing. 
and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their e eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Once again, and I'm not focusing on the eyes, but today it's the ear, the ear. Uh, Jesus is saying there's people that have grown dull. And he's not talking about people that don't come to church. He's talking about God's people. And he's saying some people come to church, but they don't, they don't hear. They don't listen. Because, once again, if you come to church with the intention of criticizing or seeing some controversy, listen, Jesus Christ, he was very controversial. In fact, he was so controversial that the priests ordered him to be killed. That's how controversial he was. Now, if you come to church to try to find controversy, you can find it. Especially when the message comes with an anointing. Because it will touch your heart. And you will listen to things that you don't want to listen. And that's why God has placed pastors, apostles, evangelists, prophets, that are able to speak the Word of God without being worried if you're going to be offended or not. Because certain times, God can only speak if you're offended. I will say it again. Certain times, especially if you're under a spirit of religion, God will offend you through messages, through church, through things you see in church. You will be offended. Why? Because the spirit of religion is producing that offense in your heart. And then you might say, I don't want to listen. And that's why the Bible says that in the last days, people will accumulate preachers and pastors and people that will preach what they want to listen. And some people will even, you know, send me emails and, and, and calls and letters saying, I don't want to listen to this. You know, my, my only answer is, too bad. <laughs> because my role here, I'm not a standing comedian. I'm a pastor. I'm a man of God, so I need to preach the Word of God. And you will listen to things that you like, but you may also listen to things that you don't like. Why? Because God loves you. And because He loves you, He wants to correct your life. He wants to put you, you know, in tune with what He says. But people develop this condition that Jesus calls uh, ears, ears, heart, and hearing. Now, I know we can use uh, some kind of devices to hear better, but the question is, are you listening? And I have to hear my dog, Nina. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, God is calling. It's like Adam was in the garden, and they committed sin, Adam and Eve. And they, they hid from God. And, uh, and uh, uh, he heard the sound of God moving in the garden. It says in Genesis chapter 3 that they heard the sound and they were hiding from God. And God called. When God calls, what do you listen? The voice of God. And when God called, Adam said, Oh, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. So there was a specific sound. It wasn't the voice of God, but even the presence of God. God coming has a sound. And Adam knew it. So if you know the voice of God, I want to tell you, you need to listen with, with your heart. That's why God said, if you, if you heard my voice, do not harden your heart. And Jesus said, these people, they become, their ears became dull because they listen, but they don't listen with their heart. So we need to be able to set our hearts in a position which we are able to listen from God. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe a divorce, a difficult situation in your life. Maybe you've lost your job. There's bad circumstances. And it happens to us all. But if we just focus on the bad things that are happening, it's going to be very hard to listen to the voice of God. But there's a discipline called prayer. There's a way to find God in the Spirit. 
the voice of God can be uh, listen, listen, we can listen to the voice of God if we're trained in our spirit and, and we need to have these times in which we just relax and we say God speak to me speak Lord I will listen I will listen but then you, you should obey also but the voice of God is the most important sound that you and I can hear. The voice of God is the most important voice in our lives. It's not your parents, it's not your wife, it's not your kids, it's not your friends. The voice of God is the most important thing that you can listen to. And we listen to so many different things and voices and sounds and so many opinions, so many things. The question is, are you listening to God? That's very personal. If you say, well, I really don't know how to listen to God. That's when you need to come to church and learn. Learn how to listen. Learn how to listen. And when the Spirit of God speaks, if you actually read that book of Revelation, it's talking about seven different churches. There were seven different messages. There were seven different issues. And God was speaking seven different things to those churches. All in a promise attached. But God was speaking and they were not listening. I'm telling you, God continues to speak today. Are you listening? For the last time, very gently, just poke the person next to you, look them in the eye and ask them, are you listening? Amen. Let's all stand. And today, you hear his voice, do not harden your heart.